This is the NVIDIA T400. It's a, it's a great little GPU, great performance for the price. It's currently the cheapest new GPU that you can actually use for gaming. Let's see how it handles emulation, shall we? Hello there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. This is the T400. You know, I was super into the T-series of GPUs back during the great GPU famine of the not 20s uh, Not only were the T600 and the T400 the, the only GPUs that you could buy, they actually offered really good performance compared to the price. That's changed a little bit recently, you know, now that you could buy other cheap GPUs, but here's the thing. Even still, today, there are very few low-end GPUs for budget gamers. As for new GPUs, well, the NVIDIA gave us the 1630, which we're not going to talk about here or ever. About the AMD's RX 6400 is the best of the low-end new GPUs, but the RX 6400 costs almost double the price of the T400. Actually, if you wanted to spend less than $150, I'd say that the T400 is, is pretty much your only option. And the T400 has some tricks up its sleeve that the low-end AMD GPUs like the RX 6400 doesn't have. It has three display port ports uh, instead of the two that the RX 6400 has. It has built-in video encoding hardware, which the 6400 doesn't have. And it has the full 16 PCIe lanes, so it won't suffer performance decreases on the PCIe 3.0 systems like the RX 6400 does. And it's single slot low profile. So, it'll work well in any size and shape of computer, even those low-profile office machines, like the Dell Optiplex or whatever. Just grab one of those cheap online and slap a T400 in there and you got yourself a gaming PC. I actually made a video doing just that. I'll uh, link to that in the description below if you want to check it out. I made a few other videos on the T400 too. I'll include a link to my review of this thing in the description below. And I made a few emulation videos, semi-recently, you, know, you know, testing out higher-end emulation on the lower end GPUs. I did the RX 6400, which is the most powerful cheap GPU that you could buy. The T600, which is not as cheap as the 6400, but still offers good performance for the price, especially if you need the extra stuff that the T-Series has to offer. So, it's time. The T400 needs its time in the spotlight. Oh. Oh. I actually got a ton of requests to do this video. You guys seem really interested in emulation of the T400 for some reason. Well, ask and you shall receive. We'll test out some easy stuff, some medium stuff, and we'll see what we can run at 4K. And we'll see if it can handle any of the high res stuff. And uh, spoiler alert, yes it can. By the way, I'm running this in my system that has a Ryzen 7 5800X, 48 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM running at 3600 MHz, and a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Full specs listed in the description below. Uh, I'm, I'm using my high-end setup to eliminate any CPU bottlenecks, so any low performance will be due to the T400 itself and you know, not some other component. Oh, by the way, I'm using my Retrobat build for all the emulation testing today. Uh, do you guys know about Retrobat? His hands down the quickest and easiest way to get started with the uh, emulation on the PC. Comes with pretty much all the emulators pre-installed, and it has this awesome user interface. With, uh, your systems and games all listed, and you can scrape the box art and videos or whatever you want. I made a guide of how to set this up. I'll uh, link to that uh, video in the description below if you wanted to check it out. So obviously the low-end stuff will run fine. This stuff will run fine on pretty much any system, to be honest. Even a cheap low-end laptop could run Game Boy or NES or Sega Genesis, SNES or Mabe. Even the harder to emulate 16-bit systems won't be a problem on even your phone, for Pete's sake. So let's just skip past all this low-end stuff and go right into the 3D systems. This early 3D stuff like the Nintendo 64, uh, this will be our chance to achieve 4K with this GPU. I don't think it's going to be able to handle 4K with the later stuff, but this early stuff should be no problem. As you can see, here we have F0X for the Nintendo 64, running in the Libretro Parallel N64 uh, RetroArch Core, upscaled to 4K. It's maintaining a constant 60fps, uh, no dips or drops or anything. And provided you have a good enough CPU, you should have no problem with the 4K Nintendo 64 emulation on the T400. And the same thing with Sega Saturn. Here's Panzer Dragoon running at 60fps at 4K resolution, with the Vulcan engine on the Libretro Yamashan Shiro core. <laughs> I love saying that. Yamashan Shiro. <laughs> it's so fun to say. It just rolls right off the tongue. Yamashan Shiro. Yamashan Shiro. Oh my god, why are you even watching this? 
Uh, PS1 shouldn't be a problem either. Here's Crash Bandicoot on the Libretro Beetle PSX Core with the Vulcan backend at 4K resolution, holding 60 FPS, no problem. However, I, I had a weird issue with Tony Hawk's. I couldn't get the game to start unless I dropped the resolution down to 1440p. I don't think it was because the resolution was too high for the GPU. It was probably some sort of memory leak or something, but lowering the resolution fixed it, so I, I wanted to mention it in case you're having similar issues. And Sega Dreamcast was fine at 4K as well. Here's Crazy Taxi, running on the Libretro Flycast core with the Vulcan backend, holding a very steady 60 FPS. No dips or drops or anything. So for the most part on this older 3D stuff, the, the T600 can handle upscaling to 4K which is pretty cool for a cheap low-end GPU like this. Moving along to a newer generation of consoles, we have the GameCube. I tested these games at the Dolphin standalone emulator with the Vulcan backend. Here, I wasn't able to run at 4K. Actually, to get a, a constant 60 FPS, I had to go down to 1080p. But Metroid Prime 2 was running beautifully at 1080p. I also tested F-Zero GX, which is a ridiculously fun game. It might be one of my favorite arcade racing games, actually. It's one of those games where you really notice if your performance isn't great. And I had no issues here. It, it, it can run 60 FPS all day, and it, it felt perfect. And we'll do some Wii while we're here, because it's also running in the Dolphin emulator at 1080p. Vulcan backend, Donkey Kong Country Returns is, is running great. There is the occasional dip below 60 FPS, but it is barely noticeable. And I'm, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but the Wii has an awesome library of games. So if you, if you, if you miss that generation of uh, Nintendo games, running it in emulation, it, it runs beautifully. And it's a great way to go back and uh, check out those old great games on the Wii. Here's our first big hurdle. PS2. Here in Shadow of the Colossus, in the PCSX2 standalone emulator with a direct 3D11 backend, I wasn't able to get a playable FPS. I was getting like 47 FPS. Uh, to be fair, this game is very demanding. It's ba basically a worst case scenario in this emulator. When I dropped it to 720p, I got a much more playable FPS. Said it, it felt pretty much perfect. Some of this performance hit might just be due to the nature of PS2 emulation and this game specifically, but I wanted to show you what the T400 can and can't do. And in this case, 1080p PS2 isn't so great. Which is weird because look at this. PS3 actually ran better than PS2. Here I am playing Skate 3 on PS3, in the RPCS3 emulator with a Vulcan backend at 1080p no less. And I'm getting like 55 FPS. And in this emulator, when you get lower FPS, it, do it doesn't make the game run slower or stuttery or anything like the PS2 emulator does. It just feels more like a PC game. So playing at 55 FPS doesn't really feel any different than running at 60 FPS, to be honest. So like, I'm tempted to say that my PS2 problems are specific problems. I don't, I don't reflect the actual performance of the T400. The fact that we can run PS3 at nearly full speed is <laughs> freaking awesome. It's not all sunshine and bananas, of course. Xbox 360 emulation isn't, isn't the best. I I'm playing Red Dead Redemption in the Xenia Canary emulator, Vulcan backend with FSR upscaling to 1080p, and not great, as you can see. <laughs> Getting around 24 FPS. A very stuttery, slow 24 FPS. It it's not a really super well optimized emulator though. It, it doesn't run great, even on some pretty high end setups, but here it doesn't really run at a playable FPS at, at, at times, which is a bummer. But I expect that as Xbox 360 emulation matures, the performance will get a lot better. We just need to be patient. Be patient, damn it! Here's PSP in the PPSSPP <laughs> emulator. <sighs> Why do I find that name so funny? Uh, I am a child, I swear. Uh, running with the Vulcan backend, re playing God of War Chains of Olympus, which is the hardest PSP game to emulate. When I have it upscaled to 10x resolution, it, it runs okay at times, but then we get some serious dips at other times. And in this emulator, the games get super slow and stuttery, like with audio glitches and stuff when they dip below their native frame rate. So not really playable here. But when I go down to 6x resolution, it, it clears right up. Holds a constant 60 FPS without any dips at all. So PSP on the T400, you won't run upscale to 4K, but you, you can still play PSP at a respectable resolution. And it works great. 
And I'm not out of good news either. Check this out, you guys. This is really cool. Playing some Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Wii U in the Sebu emulator at 1080p with the Vulcan backhand. And we're getting 52 FPS, but it's actually super playable. This is the same game version uh, as the one on that other Nintendo handheld console that must not be named. I know lots of people love this game. I didn't play it much, to be honest, but I, I might yet. And if I do, I'm definitely playing the Wii U version, upscaled on my ultra-wide monitor, because this emulator runs freaking amazing. Speaking of that other Nintendo game system, uh, what do we have here? Check this out. We got the Yuzu emulator with the Vulcan backend running at 1080p. I enabled FSR upscaling, but I don't think it's doing anything since we're running at the native resolution. Like, this is 60 FPS. It, it's running literally perfect. This emulator is pretty new. The emulation of this system is new. So not every game is going to run well, but it's getting better all the time. They're working on the compatibility. And this is the kind of performance we get right out of the gate on a super cheap budget GPU like this? Are you kidding me? So there you have it. I'm actually super impressed here. The T400 can handle pretty much any emulation you want. All your low-end stuff will be fine. 4K resolution on most of the early 3D stuff like Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, or PS1. And 1080p for the harder to run stuff like GameCube and somewhat PS2, I think. The only thing that didn't run great was the Xbox 360, but I was genuinely surprised that we got really playable frame rates on Wii U and PS3 and that other Nintendo console. Oh my gosh, that ran great. And of course, you can tweak the settings to get some better performance if you need to. But overall, the T400 handled emulation way better than I thought it would. And as time goes on, as these emulators mature and get better compatibility and performance, even lower end GPUs like the T400 will be able to play high end emulation, which is really freaking awesome. And that brings us to the end. What do you think of the emulation performance on the T400? Is there anything else you'd like to see running on this GPU? Or any <laughs> GPU? I made this video based on the comments that you guys left, so if there's something you want me to do, just let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't like it for some reason. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. As always, I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.